Apart from iPhones, most new mobile phones have the same kind of charger. The charges have been made standard to try to cut down on waste because the industry reckons there are more than 100 million old phone charges in drawers and cupboards just gathering dust. Now the mobile service company O2 and the phone makers, HTC, are going to sell a new phone without a charger. They expect customers to use the charger they already have. Gareth Beavis is the mobile phones editor for Tech Radar, and Ronan Dunn is the chief executive of O2, and they're both here. Ronan Dunn, can you just explain then exactly what you were doing and why? Sure, good day. Um, what we've announced this morning is, um, as part of our commitment to uh, sustainable consumption, is to offer customers the choice of having a new phone when they come to upgrade or buy a new phone that doesn't have a charger in the box. The reason we're doing that is, as you say, there are 100 million chargers lying around in drawers in the UK alone. And what we recognise is now that most phones are standardised to a plug that goes in the wall and then a cable that clips into that uh, plug, a USB cable, the people have a choice. They actually have loads of those um, at home already. We reckon 70% or more of people will already have one or more USB type plugs in their home already. So is it all new phones uh, apart from the iPhone that you'll be selling without a charger in future or just a particular kind? So what we've announced today is that we're going to start with HTC to really give some emphasis to this campaign and what we're asking other manufacturers and other operators is to join us in this campaign with our ambition to be that by 2015 we'll have all chargers out of the box and while it's right to say that the iPhone has a slightly different cable you can still charge an iPhone using one of these um, USB plugs so even though they're connection is slightly different they still have a separate cable from the charger so they're still going the same direction so you could still do it even with an iphone how would you charge it then on your computer at home yeah so you can use a usb um cable which comes in the box with the iphone the same connection um will go into either your computer or go into the plug in the wall and then the end that goes into the phone is slightly different between most phones using a micro usb and the iPhone, but we're putting the cable in the box, so any phone you get will have the cable in the box. At the you moment, it has. The sorry to interrupt you. At the moment, it has both the cable and a and charger. Correct. And what we're saying is, we're separating the two, just giving you the cable because we're saying you don't actually need the plug. But if you want one, we will sell you one at cost. How much is cost? Three pounds forty-seven. Is the phone cheaper without the charger? Yes. Yeah, so in fact, it's about one percent of the cost of a smartphone. So it is helping us to reduce our costs. And what we will do is we'll make sure that that is passed on in value to customers. Gareth Beavis, how near do you think we are for ha having a single charger for every phone? Um, well, I think it's, it's very important to make the distinction between a charger and a cable. I think it's very different. I mean, for for smartphones for a while now have had two separate entities in the box. You've had the cable, which then connects to a plug if you want to put it in the wall, or you can just plug it into a computer. That's always been the charger, as people have known it. So you've had a cable and a plug. What they're doing now is getting rid of the plug. So the idea being that you just need the cable is going to be proliferating for a few years still. Um, I don't think we're ever going to get to the point where... It's going to be completely gone from the box because consumers always want, when you get a new smartphone, you want to have the newest components, the newest pieces to work with. But as Ronan said, the plugs in the wall are very robust. People have many of them and they're not really necessary anymore because of those numbers. Do you think that there are other companies doing something similar or is O2 really in the vanguard here? O2, yes, is in the vanguard. I haven't really heard of anyone else doing anything similar. But I know all companies are looking at ways of reducing the packaging because five years ago, phones came in huge boxes with far too many bits and pieces that people just inevitably threw away. And as the phone has become more of a commodity, everyone gets one, people want to have the latest bits and pieces. The idea is to shrink that down and, and stop consumers having to just, just create waste, unfortunately. So I think, yeah, other manufacturers definitely will follow suit if this proves to be successful. Ronan, on another subject, another service provider, Everything Everywhere, has been allowed to start offering the next generation of mobile phone services. They'll have super fast broadband ahead of you, O2, and everyone else in the marketplace. The suggestion is that it will end up in court. What do you think? Well, I think on behalf of our customers and consumers generally, our commitment is to make sure that people get choice. So what we're actively engaging in with other operators and with the government and the regulators to say, how do we make sure that we get more operators out offering the service? Our aspiration is not to slow down the technology, it's to speed it up.
So what does that mean? Will it end up in court, yes or no? I hope, I sincerely hope it won't. And in fact, I think we're making good progress in the conversations we're having at the moment, which means that we should be able to commit to a timeline that's earlier in 2013 than I might have expected three months ago. So you think the regulator will allow you to... Uh, you were meant to have to wait for an auction, weren't you? Everything everywhere can start from next year, but you think you won't have to wait as long as So we're as committed that. to having the auction beginning of January. Everybody's agreed on that. And what we're now looking at is how quickly we can release the spectrum. Because the key is not actually the date of the auction, but in fact we're still transmitting on some of, that, uh, frequen- some of those frequencies. So the faster we clear those, um, then the sooner we'll be able to launch a service. So give us a date then. When do you think? So my aspiration is um, by the summer, but... Uh, uh, if I can do it even earlier than that, that would be fantastic news. You'll still be behind everything everywhere. We will. You'll be six months behind. We will, but you know what? Your service provider offers you lots of benefits and we still offer a compelling proposition for our customers. Ronan Dunn, Chief Executive of O2 and Gareth Beavis from Tech Radar. Thank you both for coming in. Thank you.